I got more gift cards yesterday. Um, I had two people um, donate to this. So yesterday I went and I got two. I mean, I got more. Hold on. I hope I don't mess up this live. My um, Bluetooth because if not, it'll sound weird. Um, so we got Burger King, Chick-fil-A, a Little Caesars, Five Below, Starbucks, Sonic, and Chili's. Those are all, all that we have right now. So whenever you get message, you'll know which car that you want. Um, I got the name in my hand. I just pulled it out. So we can see who won. Angelica Munoz. Can you guys see? Angelica Munoz won. So I'll reach out to her and see what card she wants. Okay, so this morning we're going to be talking about Martha and Mary. I don't know if I posted it on, on Sunday or Monday. I posted it sometime on Sunday or Monday. Um, because that's when God had already put it in my heart, um, to talk about these two women. And then during the week, I get confirmation, um, on, you know, the topic. So Martha and Mary were, um, sisters. It's a very short, short passage in the, in the Bible. It's in Luke 10 in case you want to listen to it. I mean, in case you want to read it on your own or you... You want to, you know, see what God reveals to you through this. So I'll read it really quick. It's just like four, four long sentences. And then um, I'll discuss why this is, this is something that we're going to be talking about today. It says, at the home of Martha and Mary, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home up to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that needed to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. So, you know... God gave this to me like I've shared with y'all plenty of times. My messages are from personal experiences or something that I'm currently going through. And so this is something that really like whenever I posted it the other day, we need um, more Marys and less Marthas is because, you know, most women are busybodies. You know, we wake up, we're making breakfast, we're getting kids ready for school we're um, packing lunches, we're driving them to school, we go to work, we come home, make dinner, get everyone ready for bed, and we're just so busy. We're, we're really busy bodies. I'm not going to say that men don't do that because my husband does. You know, he goes to work, you know, whenever he was working, even now when he goes and cuts yards and stuff, he'll come home, still help me clean. He doesn't cook, thank God, but he still helps out with, with things, you know, for the kids and myself. But those kind of men are just a few. So I'm speaking more about women. Um, and this topic will relate to men too because, you know, we can both be a Mary and a Martha. But this is more for women, what I'm saying. A lot of us are like Marthas. We're always busy, always on the go, you know, always quick to give and quick to respond to people. You know, mom, mommy, mama, mommy, you know, always getting calls to do stuff. And so that was my issue. Um, you see, in whenever I first got saved, I was attending this church. And, you know, that's where I got saved. That's where I encountered God. You know, that's when I really felt the love of God. Um, but through that process and through the, the time, the years I was at that church, um, it became more for me to do, to receive from God. It felt like if I wasn't serving if if I wasn't doing, you know, everything that the church was offering that I wasn't standing right with the other members there. 
So I grew with a, a thought of, I have to do works for God, for him to love me more or for him to acknowledge me or I would feel less than. And so, you know, that, that became real to me. You know, I, it became something that I thought I really had to do. I really had to be at the church three, four days out the week. I really had to go to all the serve events. I really had to, you know, give constantly. And it wasn't a desire anymore for me. It was more like, oh, you know, like a burden almost. Not something that I was excited to do. Not something that I was called to do. Well, I, that was many years, you know, many years. And even leaving that church and, and seeing the reality of it and stuff, it was something that was not right. And so in 2019, I went to a freedom group um, with Elevate People, our, our former church. Um, and, you know, it was amazing. I, I started seeing things inside of me and God was revealing things to me that I had never known that I was suffering from. And that was one of them. It was about, you know, us doing because, you know, we're so human, you know, we're, we're, we're like, if you do for me, I'm going to do for you or the amount that you do for me is how much I love you. And that's how I was kind of seeing God, you know, like, God, I'm doing all these things for you, but I don't see that love. You know, I'm doing like, like kids, you know, kids and parents, mom, I'm going to wash the dishes or Mom, I'm going to help you with the clothes or I'm going to do these favors for you. Your attention to them is like, wow, thank you, son. You know, you get excited and you're happy and you're like overjoyed and you might favor that child a little bit more. But that's not God. God is not like that. He said he died for us and he already loved us. It said before he created us, he loved us. And so that love cannot change. That love is not based on what you do for me and how much you do it. It's a, it's a sincere love. It's genuine. It's unconditional. So without conditions, there's nothing you can do or won't do that will affect your love that God has for you. And so I had to um, untrain my mind and my thinking of that way that I had like I got to do this for God so he can love me because that's not, that's not who he is. And so once I got out of that training of, of lies, I began to see this relationship with, that I have with God is a personal relationship. And that's what a lot of us fail to see is our relationship with God is personal. Whether we serve at the church, whether we serve at a homeless center, whether we work, whether we don't go to church. You know, whatever the circumstances is, your relationship with God is your relationship with God. You shouldn't mimic someone's relationship with God. That was another thing that I had. You know, I was always looking at the other person like Martha. Hey, Jesus, shouldn't you see, shouldn't Martha, Mary be over here helping me? I was always looking at somebody else like, they're not doing this. You know, why do I got to do it? So it was not coming from an attitude of, I want to do this. So, you know, as the years passed by and as I really started to learn, I don't always have to say yes to things that people ask me. <clears throat> I don't always have to go and do things that I don't want to do. It has to be something personal. So we have to drink some water. <clears throat> we have to be able to come from a sincere heart, like when we love someone. We want to do for them, you know, when we first are, are married or first, you know, dating someone, we want to go above and beyond for them. You know, we want to impress them. We want to, you know, really your heart's desire is to do for them. And this is what the desire for you to do for God, his works, whatever he wants you to, whatever he puts in your heart, you know, say they have a serve event where you can go um, work at the food bank and you're like, Am I doing this for because the pastors are asking me or because a friend is inviting me or am I doing this because God has already put that in my heart to do? I want to go help because I want to go help. And so that's the difference. You're doing it for man or you're doing it for God. If you're doing it for God, you're going to feel fruitful. You're going to feel joyful. You're going to feel, wow, this completes me. This, this is something that I really like. If you're doing it for man, you're going to get tired. You're going to get bored. You're going to moan. You're going to complain. You're going to look like I'm tired of doing this. And eventually you're going to wither up and be like dead because that's what happened to me. And that's what happens to a lot of people. A lot of people don't realize 
that they're doing it for men. They, they have that pressure on them because I was, I was pressured that way where, you know, all the congregation is doing this thing and you're the only one not doing it. So you looked at like the outcast. Um, and then you're, you feel like unwanted there. You feel like less than, or what's wrong with you? Why aren't you wanting to serve that way? But a lot of people are doing things because they want to satisfy somebody else because they're not really wanting to do it. They're, they're more obligated to do it. And, and that's not right because God sees the heart and he knows there are a lot of people who like to serve. I, I love to serve, but I like to serve on the things that that God has already equipped me for, you know, God, God's called me to be in the children's ministry. I love to serve with the children. Um, God has called me to serve in the kitchen. You know, I like to cook. I like to serve people. God has called me to be a prayer warrior. I love to go pray for people, but things that I'm not comfortable with doing, like ushering people, I don't want to usher nobody because for one, I can't see if I'm not wearing my glasses, I can't see. And I'm going to sit you next to someone <laughs> or I'm going to tell you to go over there and there's no space. Like there's, there's, there's areas where God has called you to be. And so if God has already put that in your heart, your desire is to help there. Your, your need to, to help is, is already there. It's evident. You, you know, you're asking for your, your, you're asking the leaders, can I go do this? Not someone asking you. Hey, do you mind doing this? And you're like, eh, you know, kind of. That's what this is. You know, it's it's this topic that I'm talking about is Martha was one to prepare. She was one to go and, you know, uh, get her house ready, maybe make the food. But Mary was, let me sit at God's feet. And sometimes we're so busy, e even if we're called to do certain things, you know, for, for a season, I was always saying, yes, 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 yes. Anything everybody asks me, I'll do it. I'll be there. But when would I actually have time to really sit down and worship God? When will I have time to actually sit in his presence? And this is the perfect explanation. You know, Martha... We all want to serve people. You know, we all, especially if somebody's coming to our home, especially somebody that important, you know, we want to make the house ready, make the house smell good, you know, maybe make a, a nice dish of food. But then we also need to be there for that person. So it's, it's so hard to explain. We don't want to become too enwrapped with distractions, but we also want to cater to people. But we also don't want to be labeled as the one that's always sitting, you know, so it's kind of like you have to check your own heart. You and God, that's why I said it's a personal relationship. Only you know what's in your heart. And if you're called to do that, God will tell you himself, sit down. And that's when you have to listen and you have to say, okay, God, I'll sit down. I'll worship you. I'll take a moment, a season of break, a season of what I'm not serving um, a season of just me and you, you know, just, just uh, going and attending church, receiving. Sometimes we have to receive only. Sometimes we can't give, you know, we'll go through trials and tribulations. You know, this, this person that I know, she lost her son and, and she said, right now it's my time to grieve, you know, my time to sit and receive from everybody else. And I believe that this is what this is, is about, you know, not necessarily saying that you shouldn't serve because you should want to. It should be a desire. But also knowing there's a time where I have to sit back and I have to receive. I have to get from everybody else that I've been pouring into. And that's totally fine. You know, we, like I said, we go through times where we're not able to, you know, give because, you know, we're drained or, or something is going on in our house or with our family or, you know, you're sick, whatever. It's okay to sit back and, and do like Mary did. Sit, just sit there at the feet of Jesus. And this is so important with, you know, even not relating to, to God. This is so important with your kids, with your, with your home. Your first ministry should be your home. Are you spending enough time with your kids? Are you spending enough time with your husband? Are you spending enough time with your parents? You know, it's it's like this. You know, we, we go to work. We have all these distractions that we're going through all day. And then we come home and we're just like, man, I'm drained. I just want to be by myself. But what 
time are you giving to those around you, your ministry at home? What time are you giving to those around you that you're not going to get that time back anymore? We have to, you know, Jesus just came to their house. They're not going to get that time again. Who says that he's going to come back? You know, he's traveling that, that area, you know, different cities and villages to, to be with other people. And if you don't have if, if Mary wouldn't have sat there at Jesus' feet, she would have been like Martha, you know, trying to entertain him, trying to, you know, get things prepared. But that moment was for her to just sit there and acknowledge his presence, be in his presence. And a lot of us failed to do that. I'm one, you know, most of the time I come home, I'm tired. You know, I'm not physically working, but mentally working is a lot more draining. And, you know, Coming home on my way, I'm trying to fill myself up with something so that way I could have that energy to want to engage with my husband or the kids or, you know, make dinner, you know, in peaceful way. Not, oh, here we go again. You know, I should, we should be more, uh, we should be more, we should want to be more involved with our family. You know, the kids sit down and color with them 15 20 minutes uh play a game with them i have no idea how to play fortnite but i'll get on there sometimes with nathan and try my best um with nicholas you know i'll go sit there or hear what he has to say about some youtube video you know we should want to do these things we should desire it because those are our loved ones and and time is just going you know time is just ticking and we don't have the opportunity you know lord forbid something happened today we don't get that time back you know that time is gone and so we really need to learn to sit down my husband's favorite words to me are sit your butt down somewhere and chill <laughs> because it's very hard for me to do that you know that's why i said i'm learning this process through this year i've learned to just sit down even with this pandemic you know a lot of us were so anxious and so like caught off guard because we don't know how to stay home we don't know how to just sit down and you know learn on our own you know go on the get on our bible and just just be with god on our own we're so used to people teaching us and somebody else pouring into us we don't know how to be on our own we don't know how to just sit back and 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 just be one with you and God. We don't know how to meditate. We don't know how to receive because we're so much on the go. There's so many distractions. You know, people in jail, they come out so freaking smart. Most of them, if, they, if, they're, if they're there for a long time, the only thing that they can do is receive. They're receiving from books. They're receiving from classes. They attend, you know, three, four classes a day. You know, they're trying to get fed they're trying to improve themselves and so when they come out that's not the same because there's so many distractions they got to work they got family you know they want to do things you know hobbies and stuff like that because out here there's so many distractions and we got to learn that there's one there's there's only one god and we have to acknowledge him we have to learn to sit there and receive from him so this is what this was about today you know I really hope that we can, as women, first of all, that we can learn to really sit down somewhere sometimes. It's okay to say no sometimes and realize our ministry first is at home. And when things are going crazy there, how are we going to concentrate on everything else? We have to be able to pour into our homes first and then everything else comes afterward. So I'm going to pray for us and then we are done. Thank you, Father God, for today. Thank you for your messages, Father God. You never fall short, Lord. Every week that you're giving me something, Father God, I know it's for someone. It's for me, Father God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for everything that you're doing with this uh, Thursday morning message, Father God. I just ask for forgiveness, Lord, for everything that I've done and everything that I will do, Father God. Everyone on here, Lord, I pray that you would forgive them. <clears throat> For anything that they've done, Father God, that's unrepented, Lord. Um, Father God, I just pray that you would, this message would go forth and, and you would see more Marys, Father God. More Marys sitting at your feet. More Marys worshiping you. More Marys trying to know who you are, Father God. 
we're so full of distractions, Lord, and I need to be with you, Father God, but I just pray that you would soften our hearts and show us areas where we're drained in, Lord, and 